Guys, I hope you are well and welcome to another video. Now we've got two more left in this top 10 series. We've got Jekyll and Hyde today and then we've got Romeo and Juliet at some point in the future. Maybe next week, maybe the week after. I'm not sure yet and then we are done. Now guys, Jekyll and Hyde, it fits into your 19th century text. So if any of you guys are doing Jekyll and Hyde, please learn these 10 quotes. Quote number one, guys. Oh, <coughs> Oh, my poor old Harry Jekyll, if I ever read a Satan signature upon a face, it is on that of your new friend. This is a beautiful quote, guys. This is a beautiful quote when it comes to looking at Utterson, when it comes to looking at Jekyll, and it, when it comes to looking at how Utterson views Hyde. There's so many layers to this quote. The first point you want to look at, guys, is the way Utterson views Hyde. He's, just, he's not saying, guys, that he reminds him of the devil. It's almost as though he's been stamped by the devil. He's got Satan's signature on his face, as though Satan has given him the seal of approval. But then it's a bit of a juxtaposition because he then refers to him as your new friend. These are not the kind of friends we keep. And this shows, guys, that very early on, Utterson suspected something was up here, something was not correct. But he stayed quiet. He didn't do much and he remained sealed when it comes to his lips. And this links to quote number two, guys. Quote number two says, Utterson, Utterson guys, on the first page says, I incline to Cain's heresy. Um, I let my brother go to the devil in his own way. Now, guys, this quote for me sums up the entire book, the entire novel. Number one. Who, what are Cain and Abel, guys? What are Cain and Abel? Cain and Abel, guys, they were the sons of Adam. And Cain murdered Abel. And the first thing uh, Utterson says is, I'm inclined to that kind of evil nature. I'm inclined to that dark side. But more, more, more importantly, it's not the evil nature that inclines him. Second part, I let my brother go to the devil. He implies that when Cain killed Abel, Cain let Abel go to the devil which first is a bit of a jab when it comes to religion. It's a dig at religion because most people believe that Abel went to God and so on, but he's saying Cain went to the devil. But it foreshadows the text because it's exactly what he does. Who is his brother? Jekyll. He literally watches Jekyll decline, 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 decline. Turns the other cheek, turns the other cheek, turns the other cheek. He only gets involved at the end of the text when he's forced to get involved. So guys, that text, that, that quote, sorry, I let my brother go to the devil, is juxtaposition again, because why would somebody let their brother go to the devil? But he does, because it's that point that keeps coming up in this play. They ignore each other's shortcomings. They ignore each other's sins. They don't really help. Okay. I felt younger, lighter, happier in body. Rule of three used here, guys. And this is how Jekyll talks about his transformation from Jekyll to Hyde and how he feels in Hyde. Now, Jekyll becoming Hyde, guys, it's not just a matter of him transforming his persona, his personality, his physical nature and so on. It has symbolism and a symbolism of the idea that when we all really look at who we are, those thoughts that we don't share with other people, those feelings that we have that we shouldn't be feeling, we all stop ourselves because maybe we have a moral compass, maybe we follow a particular religion, maybe our parents have grounded us, but we all, we never let our, we shouldn't let our thoughts that are bad become our actions. But Jekyll sounds like a druggie, like an addict. Why? He says that the moment he became Hyde, but what does Hyde symbolize? Hyde symbolizes sin. Hyde symbolizes negativity. Hyde symbolizes your dark and deep desires, as Macbeth would say. The moment he did that, he felt free. He felt lighter. What is it? He felt happier. He felt younger. So it's as though, guys, evil is, is enticing him. It's pulling him in. He's a slave to his desires. But just like every good thing, what goes up must come down. And it eventually does. Now, quote number four, guys, is a, is a nice quote. It's Jekyll's justification. Um, and it's the description of the duality of nature. 
All human beings, as we meet them, are co-mingled out of good and evil. And Edward Hyde alone in the ranks of mankind was pure evil. I really, really like this quote, guys, because a lot of people talk about the duality of nature in this quote, how there's two sides to people and so on. We all have good and bad, but this quote is saying that what makes Jekyll and Hyde so unique was that they were housed in two separate bodies. And then these two bodies were living among society. And it shows us that if we don't control our duality, if we don't control our two sides on both extremes, then what will happen? We will become broken, lost, shattered people. Hyde is a slave. Hyde is a slave to evilness. Jekyll becomes a slave to his evilness through Hyde. He does see sense later, but for a lot of the text guys, he is struggling massively. So it's that point guys, that, that kind of admittance that as human beings, we are commingled, we are a mixture of good and bad. And that's fine, as long as we are a mixture. But the moment you become fully bad, fully evil, that's when you get Hyde and that's when bad things begin to happen. Alright guys, this is one of my favourite quotes. Um, it's towards the end of the text. Um, and it's when Jekyll is trying to stay out of Hyde's kind of body. He's trying to avoid Hyde. And it talks about how he transforms into Hyde, like after months of avoiding. And he says, I sat in the sun on a bench. Lovely, pathetic fallacy. Beautiful day. The animal within me. Who's the animal? Hyde. Licking the chops of memory. Beautiful me metaphor, guys. It's like an animal that sees meat and begins licking its lips at the thought of devouring that meat. Hyde is dying to come out. Jekyll is dying for Hyde to come out. He's licking, in, he's not literally licking, but he's giving the example that he's licking the chops of what? Of memory. Ah, oh, I remember when we battered Sadamba's Karoo. I remember when we trampled over the girl. Ah, oh, that felt so good, I felt so free. The spirit is a little drowsed. Religion is being pushed out a bit. It's being kind of, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of getting at the back door. When religion goes, evil comes. Promising subsequent petness, but not yet begin to move. Guys, lovely core here. To show man's nature, our desires, the power of Hyde, the weakness of Jekyll. The duality of our natures and how there's a constant battle between good and bad always going on. But this idea, guys, of licking the chops, it reflects and it points out that even though it's bad, and even though they knew it was bad, you can't help yourself. It's human nature, is what the text is arguing. All right, guys, quote number six. If I am the chief of sinners, I am the chief of sufferers also. Jekyll, guys, for a lot of the text, he's almost hated. And we don't really get much of an insight into Jekyll. When I say he's hated, guys, I mean he's hated by the reader because we don't really learn much about him. Um, but we have a, a very, in, very strong insight here. And for me, guys, this quote, it, 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 what's we looking for? It highlights the, the, the theme of a lot of 19th century texts, this Frankenstein and so on. Don't mess with God. Don't try to be God. Frankenstein tries to create a monster. Jekyll tries to create Hyde. In the pursuit of freedom, in the pursuit of happiness, they suffer tenfold. He clearly says that if I have done bad, then I have also suffered for my sins. Do not try to mess with God, guys. All right, guys, seven, famous one. With ape-like fury, he was trampling his victim underfoot and hailing down his storm of blows under which the bones were audibly shattered. Guys, ape like fury, it links to Darwin's theory of evolution. Hyde is like an unevolved creature. He's stuck on the timeline of evolution, if you believe in that. Um, he was trampling his victim, guys. Smash, smash, smash. And hailing down a storm of blows under which the bones were audibly shattered. You can hear it. You can hear the bones, the bones breaking. You can hear um, Saddam with Karu literally breaking apart. No human being is capable of this. This is the work of an animal. Now, I'm not saying the hide was literally an animal, 
but it's that point guys in creating hide Jekyll has almost gone backwards on the line of evolution he's not moved forward he's not made any advance ad, ad, advancements he's behaving like men and women used to behave back in the days when they were still evolving and that is the common theme that comes across with Hyde. Number eight, guys, the man trampled calmly. You've got your oxymoron there because no one is trampling calmly over bodies. The child's body and left her screaming on the ground. It sounds nothing to hear, but it was hellish to see. Again, guys, this is a lovely example of the desire, of the id in full flow. Why is that? Because, again, he's trampling not over an enemy, not over a, a, a potential um, enemy. Just a random, innocent girl on the streets. But it's again that point of letting your letting your 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 desires run wild. Now you have the juxtaposition in the fact that he's trampling over a girl, and then you have the oxymoron of him trampling calmly over the body. Because no one tramples calmly over bodies. Um, next one, guys, this is a good quote to use for the contrast of the rich and the poor. Say the street shot out in contrast to his dingy neighborhood like a fire in a forest. This is a beautiful quote to show the divide between the rich and the, and the poor. This is now talking about where Utterson saw Hyde sneaking into. And it talks about it as a fire in a forest. It stands out like a sore thumb. You can tell that this is where the poor people lived and this is where the rich people lived. And it brings the class divide home. It brings the injustice of London home. And finally, guys, is the quote about a man who realizes that he has no control. I swear to God, I will never set eyes on him again. I bind my honor to you that I am done with him in this world. It is all at an end. And indeed, he does not want my help. You do not know him as I do. He is safe. Let's forget this part, guys. Let's look at the top part. Um, Jekyll is promising, guys. Jekyll is promising that he, he will never see Hyde again. Hyde is gone. But we know he's lying. He's lying through his teeth. And this quote, guys, is, is, a, is a nice quote. It's a nice quote, guys, to highlight the lack of control that Jekyll has. A lot of people argue that Jekyll loses control of Hyde at the end of the text. Guys, he's lost control from the very beginning. <clears throat> the moment he, he lies for Hyde, the moment he lies to keep Hyde alive because he loves that feeling so much, he's gone. He's a slave to his desires. He's a slave to Hyde. He has got control when he's trampling over the girl and he's beating Saddam with Karu. So Jekyll is, has lost control from the very beginning of himself. The difference is by the end of the text, he loses control of himself. He loses control of Hyde. And therefore, he loses control of everything around him. And the moral purpose of this text comes back to the idea, don't mess with God because you can't create life. And that or those are the 10 quotes, guys, from Jekyll and Hyde that you should learn. Apply them to lots of different questions and see how far you get. Guys, I hope you found that video, video, video. I hope you found that video beneficial. It's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.